All right, in this video, I'm going to be working Algebra 2 Quiz 7.4, which is about analyzing polynomials with the graphing calculator. And so I'm just going to work with the polynomial I already entered the calculator. If you need to see how to do that, you can go back and watch the lesson video or the homework video. You can see me do that a bunch of times. So we're going to go over here. We're going to graph this on the standard window. And we're going to hopefully use this to find the coordinates of the x-intercepts. Yeah, so we're going to need to calculate the zeros. And that's going to be, that looks like x equals negative 3. So uh, negative 4 would be a left bound. Negative 2 would be a right bound. Give it a guess. And OK, it's not exactly negative 3. It's negative 3.027. OK, so the x, y coordinates of each x-intercept. So okay. negative 3.027. And zero. And then the other one is going to be, I'm going to calculate the other zero. It looks like that's between, let's just say between zero and two. It's 1.174 or 1.173 if you like. And y is equal to zero. Yeah, that other one I forgot. It's important that we write zero and not, you know, whatever e negative twelve, um, because the calculator means zero when it writes that. And I, but I told y'all that in the lesson. And I showed you that in the video. So for what values of x is f of x less than or equal to zero? So this is kind of what f looks like, and f is less less than zero. Well, f represents the y coordinate. Any time over here where the y the y value is going to be negative, right? And so that's going to be when x is between the two zeros. So x is between negative 3.027 and, oh, whoops, I don't think I need that anymore, and 1.174. Okay, so that's going to be the values of x that make f less than or equal to zero. Oh, whoops, okay, I'm going to need those to be less than or equals as well. Right, because over here, that's where f is equal to zero. That's what we found in the first part. All right, the next one is that what values of x, if any, does g of x equals negative x times x minus 3 squared have a relative minimum? So I entered that in the calculator. Zoom to the standard window, see what I've got. Looking for a relative minimum, so I calculate the minimum. Okay, that is to the left of the minimum. Looks like 3 is to the right of the minimum. Okay, give it a guess. Okay, and so I've got a minimum at x equals 1 and y is negative 4. So what value of x? That's just going to be x equals 1. That's about what it looked like. I'm going to say x equals 1. That's I don't think the, the drawing was totally necessary, but, you know, it's good for showing your reasoning. All right, so for what values of x is this polynomial decreasing? So, all right, let's probably just bring that calculator back. All right, so we type in into y1, and remember that we can access the fraction bar here by going to F1. So we cl click the green button and then click that to access the F1 menu and get the fraction bar. Okay, zooming to the standard window. And seeing where is this thing decreasing? Okay, so it's going to be between here and there, right? Because it's a third degree polynomial, so it can only have two extrema. So this is going to be the, the values of x where the thing's decreasing. So I'm going to need to find the location of the maximum. Give myself some room to write my result also. Okay, so calculate the maximum, option four. It looks like, I guess I could scroll to the left a bit. Okay, scroll to the right of it. Give it a guess. And all right, that looks like that's at x equals negative 1.99999. That means negative 2. So that's negative 2 is less than x is less than, and then I'll find the location of this. But that looks like x equals positive 2 to me, if that's going to be negative 2. But who knows? So I'm calculating the minimum. OK, 0 is to the left of it. 2, 3 is definitely to the right of that. And 
and yeah, 1.999, that means positive 2. Okay, so negative 2 is less than x is less than 2. That's where this polynomial is decreasing. All right, now the next one's going to ask us to find all the roots of the polynomial 2x to the 3 plus 4x to the 2 minus 6x minus 20. And unfortunately, this one's not going to be factorable because 2 to, the, 2 to 4 is not the same ratio as negative 6 to negative 20. So we're going to type it into our graphing calculator, and we're going to need a sketch. And it's going to look like that. Okay, so I don't think I really need to manipulate the window to know that what this thing is actually doing is it's going like that. And I just can't really see all of it. So what I am going to do instead is I'm just going to kind of like look and try to find, oh, look, that looks like x equals 2. Let's see. Okay, it's between 1 and 3. Sure enough, x equals 2. So that's one of the roots. So I'm going to say, all right, well, I'll just do some synthetic division. 2, 4, negative 6, negative 20. Divide this by x minus 2 and drop it down. And, whoa, okay, but sure enough, um, it works out. Okay, and so what I've got here is I've divided out x minus 2 from my polynomial. I'm left with 2x squared plus 8x plus 10. Okay, and I want the roots, so I want to know where the solutions of, you know, where that thing equals 0. Okay, so I've got x equals 2, but I kind of already knew that. And then from 2x squared plus 8x plus 10, you know, you could divide everything by 2 if you wanted. But I think I'm just going to do the quadratic formula on this, because I know that it's not going to be a real number. Oh, I see one x intercept. So I know that these are going to come back complex and really the only way we can do this you know we can't really factor and get complex numbers back we always use the quadratic formula so we might as well just go for it right now so i'm going to say x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c so 4 times 2 times 10 is 80 all over 2a so that's negative 8 plus or minus the square root of, that would be negative 16. So the square root of negative 16 is 4i, all divided by 4. So I'm going to have negative 8 over 4 is negative 2, plus 4i over 4, and x equals negative 2 minus 4i over 4. Okay, so that's going to be all the roots would be those three right there. All right, now the last problem is asking for the absolute maximum value of the function. Is the value of the function f of x, that's going to be a y value. So I'm just going to point that out at the very beginning, that what we're looking for, the thing we're going to report, our answer is going to be a value of y, where it's the very largest. So I've typed it into y1. I'm going to zoom to the standard window. I bet this one, whoops, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Um, no, trace. OK, well, that works. Okay, so I'm looking for the y-coordinate right here. So I'm going to calculate that maximum. It looks like it's to the right of x equals negative 3. To the left of, well, to the left of 0. And then, okay, my maximum happens at x equals negative 2.25. And the y-value is 8.543. So I would say, you know, Maximum value of f of x is 8.543. All right, form B. So we are going to be working with the function f of x equals x to the 4 plus x to the 3 minus 4x to the 2 minus 2. All right, so we enter that in y1, we go and we graph the thing in the standard window, and we see our, that's not going to quite give us the, oh, but we don't need the relative minimum for this problem. Okay, so the x-intercept on the graph of f is going to be, we're going to calculate a 0 between x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 2. And we get negative 2.631 or 630 and y is 0. 
Okay, the other zero, we're gonna calculate a zero between x equals one and x equals two. And we get 1.720 or 719. And y is zero, right? We don't write 2e negative 12, because we know that means zero. Okay, and 2e negative 12, that's not even really a number, right? That's just some calculator expression. Okay, for what values of x is f of x less than or equal to zero? Okay, I drew this picture earlier, but this is pretty much what it looks like. We're looking for this region through here. And that's where it's less than zero, it's you know equal to zero. We just found that at these spots. So we're looking for when x is between negative 2.631 and 1.720. Okay, so that's that problem. All right, now they want to know when g of x has a relative maximum. So we type in the formula for g of x, we zoom to the standard window, and we look for a maximum. So there it is. I'm going to find the x coordinate there. That looks like a whole number, but maybe it's not. So maximum between here and okay, x equals 3 is to the right of the maximum. So that's, yeah, that's x equals 2 right there. So I'm going to say at x equals 2. That's all it asks for. And, you know, if I had to explain why, I'd just say, well, I just looked at the graph, you know? Uh, but I need something a little more articulate than I looked at the graph, so you could just you know, say what you saw. It was basically exactly that. And now we're going to see where a polynomial is decreasing, so we're going to type it in, graph it, say okay it's just going is it decreasing there it was decreasing right there yeah okay so just through here and we know it's third degree polynomials can have only two extrema and so this is going to be you know where it's decreasing i'm pretty certain that maximum is happening at zero but i need to make certain right so i'm going to calculate the maximum okay, it's happening between negative one and one i'm certain of that And yeah, 2.276 times 10 to the negative six with y equaling exactly one. Okay, that's, we know that y equals exactly one if I plug in zero for x right there. Okay, so this is x equals zero. It's the left edge of my interval where the polynomial is decreasing. Okay, now I need to find the x coordinate of this relative minimum here because that'll be where the polynomial stops decreasing. So I'm going to calculate the minimum. This is this. Yeah, let's keep holding on. That's to the left of it. Let's go until it starts going back up. Yeah, there we go. Get the guess. Doesn't really matter what the guess is because there's only one minimum in there. All right, and that's x equals four and y equals negative nine and two thirds. So x is between 0 and 4 is where the polynomial is decreasing. All right, this next one is to find all the roots of the polynomial type question. And so we're looking at this and we're hoping, all right, like, let's just graph this and calculate three x-intercepts and move on with our day. And we're going to graph this thing. And okay, that was prompt. And, you know, you hoped it came back and intersected two more times, but it didn't. And there, I just changed the Y window to go all the way up to 50, and you see it just kind of bends. It doesn't really turn around and come back. So it's only got one, one X-intercept. So that means there's only one real root, means there's two complex. We're going to have to find those by hand. Okay, so we're going to calculate the zero. It looks like it's negative two to me, but let's just see. Oh, whoops. Okay, so that's to the left of it. To the right of it would be here to guess. Yeah, it's x equals negative 2. So that's one of the roots of the polynomial. Okay, the other two are going to be complex, and so I'm going to find those by doing a little bit of synthetic division on this polynomial here, so I can get rid of the calculator and say, all right, 2x to the 3, 0x to the 2, 12x to the 1, and 40, we're going to divide by 
x equals negative 2 or x plus 2, something like that. Drop it down, multiply, add, add, there we go, it's working. All right, and so I have, if I factor that polynomial with x plus 2, what I'm left with is 2x squared negative 4x and positive 20. And I'm interested in where that equals 0. This time I'm going to factor out the 2, because I don't want the arithmetic to get too out of control. Yeah, I like that a lot better. So either 2 equals 0, and that's not going to happen. x plus 2 equals 0, that's x equals negative 2. We already know about that. Or this last thing equals 0. It's not going to be factorable. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Okay, so that's 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 36, all divided by 2 which is 2 plus or minus 6i divided by 2, so that's 1 plus or minus 3i. So 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i are going to be the roots of that polynomial. All right, the last problem is asking us for an absolute maximum value of the function, so we're looking for the y-coordinate where f, the graph of f is at its very highest point. So we're going to graph this on the standard window. So we're going to zoom to standard. Okay, so we're looking for the y-coordinate right there. So we're going to whoops, calculate a maximum. That's to the left of the maximum. 3 would be to the right of the maximum. And maximum is right there at x equals 1.5, and the maximum value is 6.6875, so I could say 6.688. So... The reason I'm looking for the y coordinates is the value of f, and f of x, that, that just means y. So the maximum value is 6.688. Okay, and that's going to be all for this video.